Chapter 2 The Wonderful Constancy of the Martyrs All the martyrdoms, then, were blessed and noble, which took place according to the will of God. For it becomes us, who profess greater piety than others, to ascribe the authority over all things to God. And truly, who can fail to admire their nobleness of mind and their patience, with that love towards their Lord which they displayed, who, when they were so torn with scourges, that the frame of their bodies, even to the very inward veins and arteries, was laid open, still patiently endured, while even those that stood by pitied and bewailed them. But they reached such a pitch of magnanimity that not one of them let a sigh or a groan escape them, thus proving to us all that those holy martyrs of Christ, at the very time when they suffered such torments, were absent from the body, or rather that the Lord then stood by them and communed with them. And, looking to the grace of Christ, they despised all the torments of this world, redeeming themselves from eternal punishment by the suffering of a single hour. For this reason, the fire of their savage executioners appeared cool to them, for they kept before their view escape from that fire which is eternal and never shall be quenched, and looked forward with the eyes of their heart to those good things which are laid up for such as endure, things which ear hath not heard, nor eye seen, neither have entered into the heart of man, but were revealed by the Lord to them, inasmuch as they were no longer men, but had already become angels. And, in like manner, those who were condemned to the wild beasts endured dreadful tortures, being stretched out upon beds full of spikes, and subjected to various other kinds of torments, in order that, if it were possible, the tyrant might, by their lingering tortures, lead them to a denial of Christ.' 